Richard Wolff Spirit of Excellence Here we're using the Richard Wolf Mobile Mini Cart. For the assembly of the Piranha units, place a suction pump unit on a flat surface or cart. Place the retaining plate side on an open edge of the cart. The holding bracket for the secretion container must be fastened to the suction pump unit. To adjust the bracket, use a set screw on the bottom. Plug the holding bracket to the retaining plate, making sure the locking tabs engage. Now move the suction pump unit so that the holding bracket is on a flat surface as well. To assemble the back of the unit, we will first attach the connection cable. The connection cable has a metal end and a black end. The metal end will attach to the suction pump unit. The connection cable has a notch at 12 o'clock and the suction pump unit also has a groove at 12 o'clock. Align the notch and groove, pushing straight in and turning the outer ring clockwise to secure in place. You then want to lay the connection cable from the back of the suction pump unit across the top to the front of the unit. Connect the silencer into the suction pump unit by screwing into the threaded port clockwise. Then connect the power cord to the suction pump unit. With the connection cable in place, stack the motor unit on top of the suction pump unit. Connect the power cord to the motor unit. You want to note that each unit has its own power cord. Moving on to the front of the unit, attach the connection cable to the motor unit by aligning the red dot on the cable to the red dot on the motor unit connection cable port. Your unit is now assembled. Shown here is the disposable overflow protection filter in its package and out of its package. Shown here is the tissue trap, which is composed of three parts, the lid, the retaining mesh, and the container bottom. All parts must be present, intact, and assembled for proper tissue specimen collection. The accessory sealing cap may be used to prevent specimen contamination at the end of the case. All parts must be present of the Medela non-disposable secretion container. Connect the float valve to the bottom of the lid. Ensure locking clips are present. Assemble with measuring scale to the front. Attach the lid with the handle towards the back of the secretion container. Secure into place using the locking clips. Both units must be connected to a power outlet. Power on the motor unit and then the suction pump unit. As the units power on, each will perform a calibration self-test. The motor unit will have a flashing power stick on the left side of the screen indicating a power stick is not yet connected. Begin to follow the instructions on the suction pump screen. The screen indicates help in the setup. Select yes. The screen indicates connect foot switch with the device. 
Connect the foot switch to the suction pump unit by lining up the pin on the foot switch cord with the groove on the foot switch port. Push metal end straight into the foot switch port and turn the outer ring clockwise. When assembly of the foot switch is complete, press the button under continue. Connect the red end of the vacuum tube to the vacuum connector on the device. Connect the elbow connector of the vacuum tube to the overflow protection filter. You then want to connect the assembled tube and filter to the lid of the secretion container with the arrow pointing towards the vacuum port. We are now ready to move to the sterile filled setup. To prepare the piranha system for use, gather the following sterile items. Shown here is the sterile disposable tube set in its package. Also Rotations Morse Slider Blade 497-00-113, 335mm in length, or Rotations Morse Slider Blade 497-00-103, 385mm in length. Once the Piranha system is fully assembled, turned on, and ready for setup, the sterile team member will set up the power stick with cord, the suction tube set, a rotations morselator blade. The sterile team member should immediately check for the blue o-ring which is inlaid about two-thirds of the way down in the clamping head of the power stick. The power stick components are as follows. The suction port, the clamping head, and the suction control valve lever, which is always on the on position. The non-sterile team member may now press continue. The suction pump screen indicates connect suction tubing with the motor handle. The sterile team member will connect the suction tube end labeled motor handle to the power stick suction port. The elbow end of the suction tube is then passed off to the non-sterile team member. The sterile team member then connects the smaller end of the connection cable to the power stick. Align the red dot on the power stick exactly below the suction port. Push straight in and do not twist. Align the tubing and cable using the white connectors to avoid tangling on the sterile field. The non-sterile team member will press continue and then connect the elbow end of the suction tube to the tissue trap. They will then connect the tissue trap to the secretion container. The non-sterile team member may now press continue. The suction pump screen indicates place the suction tube into clamping valve. The clamping valve will open. The non-sterile team member will place the suction tube onto the clamping valve. First center silicone portion and then pull straight into clamping valve to prevent any tears in the tubing. The sterile team member may now pass off the larger end of the connection cable to the non-sterile team member. They will now align the red dot on the handpiece's connection cable with the red dot on the motor unit, pushing straight in without twisting. You want to note the change on the screen of the motor unit. The sterile team member will attach the blade. Align the knob on the blade with the notch on the power stick. Retract the clamping head and slide the blade into the power stick and release the clamping head. Push firmly into power stick to lock into place. The non-sterile team member will disconnect the communication cable from the front of the motor unit. They then want to press and release the tool button. After, they want to press and release the double back arrows. The screen will indicate a sliding grade. With the assistance of a sterile team member, 
watching the actual blade, the non-sterile team member must press and slide up or down the grade. Set the cutting window on the blade to a 1mm opening. If released before setting correctly, start again from pressing the tool button. Once the blade is set, reconnect the communication cable to the motor unit, aligning the red dots. Note the change on the screen. The non-sterile team member may now press continue. The system will evacuate and must be allowed to do so completely or the system will alarm. To test the blade as recommended per the IFU, immerse the tip of the blade in liquid. Press suction mode on foot switch until fluid passes through the power stick and tubing and into the secretion container. With the tip of the blade still submerged, press piranha mode on the foot switch. Listen and look for the oscillation of the blade. Stop must be pressed prior to removing the lid from the canister. If the lid is removed prior to decompressing the canister, the unit will alarm indicating vacuum buildup defective. Once the secretion container is empty, replace and lock the lid and press continue. Surgeon must wait until evacuation is complete and screen indicates treatment mode to carry on. If the foot switch is pressed too early during the evacuation, the system will alarm and indicate foot switch in use. Defective. Please check. Once the suction pump unit screen indicates treatment mode, the surgeon may continue. At the end of the case, press stop from the treatment mode screen. The screen will then indicate treatment complete. Select yes. It will then indicate empty tube. Select Empty. For further instruction about clearing the handpiece tubing, follow IFU instructions for At Point of Use. Submerge piranha blade tip in fluid. Continue pushing the empty button to flush tissue out of tubing. Make sure tube is completely clear of tissue before disconnecting tubing from handpiece. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to one of our Richard Wolf Urology or Clinical Service Team members. Richard Wolf, Spirit of Excellence.